today we have with us mr rushi shengani founder and ceo earth energy ev thank you mr shengani for sparing your precious time and talking to bw business world uh, it's my pleasure being here thank you so much for having me here okay but can india be uh, one of the biggest manufacturing hub for lithium ion batteries because that's the burning issue if uh, the price of the battery is coming down by 30 to 40 percent the price of the end vehicle will be equivalent to an ice vehicle correct me if i'm wrong so Absolutely. what are you doing in that context uh, okay. frankly what we are trying to do on our side is that basically that we see that lithium doesn't have a lot of future in a big way okay. uh, so if you look at like you know uh, if you look at uh, any any chemistry of you know batteries that come out right so if i told you You would have had your, uh, you know, uh, so if you have a background in EVs, you would have known that you know the initial uh, Leaf Nissan Leaf that came out. It's, it's one of the world's uh, highest selling, uh, you know, electric vehicle in the world, right? So if that came out, they actually have evolved from nickel cadmium batteries to nickel nickel hydride NiMH batteries, and now they have shifted to lithium ion batteries. So what we have seen is that over the period of time when you know a vehicle is kept uh, is you know launched into the market, it goes through a steps, you know, and I think uh, today's uh, today's uh, ages of lithium batteries. but it's not going to be tomorrow because uh, in a way lithium is not very much sustainable in a big way because uh, you know the the exposure and the and the availability of these these uh, bare chemicals or bare elements that are required to make these batteries is very much limited to uh, to you know countries which are not very you know trade friendly so what is happening is that i think uh, in in india also if you totally look at the news in a big way these days there are new and new chemistries and new and new uh, stuff that are coming out in a big way to like you know that are that are completely different from what lithium ion batteries have to be and i think it's a, it's a good step to come out with because you know we in a way what are know what our weaknesses are and like lithium is definitely a weakness so apart from like you know targeting that you know how we promote lithium ion battery manufacturing in india we should be more to promote the manufacturing of different chemistries other than lithium in india and that's what we are doing currently uh, all our vehicles currently that are you know being launched in the market have lithium ion lithium ion batteries on them because that's what currently are available commercially but we but our battery management systems and our uh, power management systems are completely agnostic of chemistries so tomorrow if at all earth energy has to shift from lithium ion batteries to let's suppose lithium air batteries or any other chemistry of batteries we can do it overnight uh, you know and and that's not going to be an issue with us because uh, we have we have actually you know planned it in a big way because we know it's not going to be a lasting effect and you know the and and sadly to tell you about this uh, what we have seen or what we as a we as an entity feel is that for any uh, any way any chemistry to be you know uh, in a big way successful it has to go through and uh, go through a evolutionary uh, step of you know a few years being involved so if you if you look at lithium lithium got commercialized almost 10 15 years back and today we are in india using it you know after 15 years on a commercial front so i think it's going to be an evolutionary process because before you know new chemistries come into the picture but till the time uh, it's not there i think i think we as an entity are definitely open towards you know looking at different chemistries to explore and what we are trying to do on our on our front is you know to not towards the manufacturing of but of the lithium ion cells we are doing towards more about recycling of those cells so we are definitely on, already on advanced uh, talks with a few entities in india who are trying to uh, you know uh, recycle the cells that are already you know uh, you know they already crossed their second life and you know then we can actually recycle those batteries to then be able to make more cells in a sustainable way currently importing lithium and making cells would not suffice our uh, you know our motive of you know going into the market so yes we are not doing anything on the cell manufacturing front we definitely are having a battery manufacturing completely in house but on terms of cells we are actually uh, still going to be you know, depending upon uh, different uh, entities to supply us with these cells for sure as well lithium uh, not being the future of uh, e mobility then what's the future of e mobility is it graphite or is it something else because i mean uh, when it comes to e mobility it has to it has to have a future and what is what is the technology that will govern and power ev if i may put it bluntly so so i think to answer your question uh, you know very straight forward i think i what i feel is that uh, for any uh, you know thing to be sustainable it needs an ecosystem around it and the problem with lithium is that there's a big big ecosystem around it already in place and there are already like you know big oems using them in a big way you know so what is happening is that uh, it has it has become a, a little bit more popular to use and you know more easy to use having said that we don't want to be able to you know uh, do that all the time right so i think what is going to happen is that what chemistry is going to govern the future is definitely going to be the chemistry that's going to be sustainable and you know be locally producible uh 
in terms of you know i think uh, there are a lot of different different chemistries that are there and different different sort of like you know architecture towards uh, electric batteries being there you know so if you spoke about graphite you spoke about a few other chemistries i think uh, i think they are definitely going to govern the uh, the you know push towards the next chemistry that is going to come out but i think it's going to be more about i cannot comment on the chemistries which are going to be stable enough and you know be going to be start using in the next few coming years but what i can say for sure is that uh, the chemistry that is stable enough to be you know uh be able to you know survive the climate of uh, climate and the the working parameters in india and be stable enough to be able to source and produce in india it's what going to be uh, heavily uh, you know uh, uh be adopted heavily in the industry i think okay. and i'm pretty sure that the chemistry is internationally and india is going to be very different currently what is happening is international chemistries that are lithium and few other are being used in india because it's popular and easy to source but i'm definitely sure once the market and the ecosystem develops and you know uh, matures in a big way uh we indians definitely have a huge potential to start using different chemistries that are going to be very much you know be made ground up for india in terms of economics and parameters of you know, operations and everything you were in the beginning a lot more could be done for the ev industry so what uh, i mean are you looking at are you looking at subsidies are you looking at uh, some uh, some gst cut or are you looking at some sort of uh funding from the government or uh, there is something uh, else like you wish to see green tax been imposed on uh, traditional vehicles because many ev makers off record have told me th- uh, that with the imposition of green tax from next year onwards ev vehicles will get a major uh, boost i mean Of course, absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so what what uh, do uh, what uh, you uh, on behalf of earth energy or on behalf of your industry would like to see in the future uh, absolutely so i think uh, the green cess would be a very much welcome move i think that's going to definitely like promote uh, you know people to stop buying uh, you know traditional vehicles or reduce buying traditional vehicles and shift towards evs uh i would like to take like, you know so so as i told you earlier also it's it's a collective effort right so what is happening is that uh, there have been like you know almost 50 60 years of impetus given towards the petrol vehicles to promote the auto industry in a big way uh the impetus is also going to be there for the evs as well because i think uh, that's the next future i think so even government is knowing that and is going to definitely do its bit right what we are trying to as earth energy do towards promotion of more evs is that obviously subsidies subsidies and everything is there right but what we also trying to do is to reduce the initial cost of the vehicles in a big way and that can happen with you know a lot of standardization in the picture so if you look at i'll, I'll just give you a small example what we have done is that uh, all the electric vehicles that we are launching out the the glide plus evolver and the evolve z are compatible with all the public charging station that are already set up or are going to be set up in the future by indian by government or by public entities how this helps is that there's a standardization in terms of like you know so the so consumer can go to any place and charge the vehicles what is currently happening is that why people are uh, cribbing about like you know there are not enough charging stations or not enough uh, you know the charging points to be charging out i think that is because they have tried and gone to a point where they have proprietary chargers in place or proprietary connectors in place they're not compatible with the public charging station that going to be set up or that are already in there in the market so i think it's a, it's a it's a matter of also the uh, responsibility of the oem to do its bit towards like you know making the vehicles compatible towards like you know what is already there in the market rather than cribbing that there's what is not missing so what we are trying to do in a big way is that with every you know dealership that we are setting up there will be four public charging station also set up there that will be also for the electric vehicles that we make also for any other oem who wants to come and use those vehicles because what we see is that it's going to be an ecosystem effort right you cannot just like you know go about so i uh, so there's a bangalore based uh, big uh, startup who is doing it currently but they have a they have their own proprietary connectors and proprietary chargers that can only charge their scooters and and that's a, that's a stupid move in a big way i would definitely want to say because what is happening currently is that uh, we are trying to promote in a big way like and accept like you know the the market to grow and for the market to grow it has to definitely grow as a collective effort you cannot like be you know in a point and you know only consume and not give something out because uh, you know the vehicles that they are making that are proprietary connectors they can consume power from the grid through through different public charging stations but they cannot dispense power to anyone so that's that's a, that's a wrong move in a big way right so what we currently going to do and actually do is that all our vehicles can actually accept power from the public charging station at the same time our charging station that we are setting up uh, for the for our vehicles can also be able to charge other vehicles in a big way thank you mr shangani it was a pleasure interacting with you we wish you all the best in your vision and mission and we definitely hope that you can make a difference to the society and to the economy thank you so much thanks a lot for having me here abhishek and uh, it was great talking to you uh, thank you so much for having me